Welcome to this episode of Bring It On. My name's Bob Hayes and I'm going to be your show host for this episode. Today I'm interviewing one of the candidates for Board of Selectmen in Hanson. His name's Mark Mitchell Benjamino. But before we get into that, just so the viewers can see, we have two races, clearly two races here. We have one term of three years and we have four candidates. Don Howard, Kelly Waterman, Kevin Perkins, and Edwin Carter Heal. And that is for a three-year term, and you vote for one. So we have four people running for a three-year term, one candidate to be selected. And we also have four people running for the two-year seat that was vacated by the current chair. And we have four candidates, Dennis O'Connell, Ann Rain, Arlene Diaz, and Mark Mitchell Benjamino. And today I'm interviewing Mr. Benjamino. Mark, how are you? How are you, Bob? Thank Good. you for having me on today. Hey, it's great to have you. It, it's great to have, we, we have a cross section of candidates from 22 years old to, I'm not sure how the oldest one is and I'm not gonna get into that, but we have some general, different generations of people running for the seat. And, it, and it's good to see that we have eight people that wanna run for the Board of Selectmen, whether it's the two year or the three year. Because I've seen years before, in fact, recently, where we had one candidate and only one candidate, so the voters don't have a choice. It's nice for the voters to have a choice, and there are other races that they have some choices with, and we'll talk about at a later point. But, Mark, you're 22 years old, you live in Hanson. Can you tell us a little bit or tell the viewers a little bit about Mark Mitchell Benjamino? Yes, so as for me, I've lived in Hanson all of my life, all 22 years of my life. Uh, I'm an only child to two parents, Lance and Kathleen Benjamino. Lance is a fire chief and Kathleen has been a cardiac catheterization nurse her entire life. And as I've grown up in Hanson, I've utilized many of the functions of uh, Hanson Town Government, uh, the school systems, uh, our beautiful rural community. Uh, I've grown up on, in Camp Kiwani, walking the Burridge, fishing at Town Hall. Um, and then as I got into the school system, uh, I benefited from all the great uh, educators that we have here in Hanson, and now it's time for me to pay it forward. That's why uh, I'm running for selectman in this term. Awesome. Well, you, you, you talked about Camp Kiwani, which is a fabulous resource in Hanson, and, and you probably went to some of the recreational things that they had at Camp Kiwani. And then Indeed. thank you for enjoying your term in the school district. Uh, how, what did you think of our school district? You, you're a young gentleman that just graduated, and School budgets run high, they're the biggest budget in the town. And if one way or the other, successful or not, you're going to see how much a school budget affects a taxpayer. Indeed, uh, I very much enjoyed my time in the Hanson Town Schools and uh, Whitman Hanson Regional. Uh, the educators were the lifeblood of it for me. No matter what anybody has to say about um, the schools themselves or the resources they had, uh, the educators were really what made the experience for me. I think we have some fantastic teachers uh, in this town and in our school systems, and I can't thank them enough. Uh, they set me up for success for not only my personal life, but my career. Okay, well, as we said, you're jumping, you're trying to jump right into the big seat and in, in, in that, hey, thank God you do, you're doing it and you're coming forward with it. Do you have any reasons that you're running for selectmen? Yes, I do. I have many reasons that I'm running for selection. Okay, well, let's. I may jump in the middle as as sure. as you tell me a reason. I may say, well, how come? So go ahead. If I Absolutely. interrupt you, I'm apologizing uh, up front. The number one reason that I'm running for selectman is that I've always had a sense of duty ever since I was a child. Uh, my parents are, as I said, in emergency services, and they've taught me from a young age that caring for people comes first. And one of the uh, activities that I've gravitated towards as I've grown up has been politics. I believe that politics is the way for myself and others to affect the uh, most amount of people that you can. And I went to university, part of my track was leadership, and I really feel that I'm well suited to lead people and well suited to make policy decisions that benefit a great amount of people in our town. What university did you go to? We, we kind of got, I sidetracked you with that Whitman <laughs> Hanson deal, I, I, I know that. Uh, I went to Bryant University. I studied management with concentrations in leadership and political science. Okay. And you're currently gradu currently at Bryant, or have you graduated already? No, I graduated early from Bryant University in December, and now I just started a career in data intelligence. So you're out there and jumped right in both feet, and you're in the workforce. Indeed. 
it, it's amazing after you finish up all your studies and what you did and you got your paycheck, your first paycheck, what'd you think? <laughs> Oh, I loved it. It's a, it's a big difference. Uh, I've worked many jobs uh, in my time in high school, you know, wh whether it be internships or paid jobs, and uh, the pay was minuscule compared to what I'm currently making. So uh, I'm very happy now with my new job, uh, you know, jumping right into the, to the first, I guess you could say, big boy role. <laughs> Can you tell us, tell the viewers a little bit about your current job, what, what it does and how it might benefit you as a select person or a selectman? Yeah, so I, um, I work in data intelligence for a corporation known as Calibra, which stands for Collaborative Library. Uh, and basically what I do is uh, the first portion of my job is sales. So I'm selling software to people and then managing those accounts and those relationships, but then also providing strategy to people while overlooking data. So how this uh, would be a boon to me in the uh, Board of Selectmen would be uh, I'm very good at looking at numbers and seeing how they relate to a strategy, whether that be in business or otherwise. Um, and I can make very quick decisions. Um, my job requires that I am personable to people and that I execute on all of my decisions for the benefit of not only myself when I get my commission, but for the company's benefit as well. Okay, so you said there are several things, and we kind of got sidetracked. As I said, I was going to jump in because <laughs> I, you know, may forget. Um, other things you think you'd like to see if you become a select person or a selectman in the town of Hanson? In the town of Hanson, I want to see people be far more politically involved. As you said, we're seeing that now as people become more involved in the race for selectmen, uh, as everybody wants these seats, you know, these eight, these eight candidates. But I want to see a community that I remember when I was a young man, uh, a community where you can go to a lot of events, where you can see who's around you, you are well connected to your neighbors, and the political divisiveness is set aside. But then, when it gets to politics, everybody can, can join, talk about things, and make decisions. I want people to be involved. I don't want to be the prime decision maker. I don't want to have the board be the prime decision makers. I want everyone to come up voice their opinions, have them all be considered, and then make a decision. Lots of times when people talk about being bipartisan or partisanship, and, and, and it gets kind of cloudy because they say, well, in a small town like Whitman or Hanson, and particularly we're talking about the Hanson races, they shouldn't be the, the, the cloud of, I'm a, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm an independent. What's your thoughts on that? You, you touched on it a little bit about making decisions together. I couldn't say it any better myself. That's, I completely agree. I don't think that anybody should be partisan. I think we're seeing too much of that. Whether you follow politics on a federal level, a state level, or a municipal town level, there's a lot of divisiveness nowadays. And I really hate to see it because I think it's tearing apart a lot of our communities and a lot of our relationships. And I think to be effective in politics, you need people to come together and build consensus and cross the aisle. Whether you agree wholesale with someone's opinion or not, being able to sit there and hear the other side's opinions, taking everything in its entirety, its entire scope, and then making a decision is very important so that everyone is heard and you can have the best outcome for the people. Okay. Well, we can segue right into a real tough one, <laughs> okay. and that's going to be talking about Social media. Okay. Social media is plays a big part in everything today because it seems like a lot of people play it out on the internet, but they only tell a little bit of the story or they don't intentionally do it. They only hear one side of the story. How do you deal with it? Well, how you deal with it is you get as much information as you possibly can and put it out on social media. I think the problem with social media is, like you said, everybody is giving little snippets. You're only seeing what people want you to see. And for someone such as myself, that if I am you know, uh, a candidate that wins, I'm going to have to voice my opinion, but also give the constituency all the information that I know, right? No partisanship, no snippets. That's how I'm going to deal with it personally. But as for social media within the town and with the people, it's very difficult. I think that our pages and social media should be moderated in some capacity to ensure that people get the full story, but at the same time that you do not limit people's free speech. Uh, I think it would be very difficult for people to find the balance 
but I look forward to conversations with people and uh, administrators that are running pages or uh, have a stake in Hanson's politics and uh, having a conversation with them about how we can better engage people and how we can give accurate information to the voters. Okay, so it sounds like you wouldn't be opposed to maybe administrating your own page so you could make sure that the information is full and complete because as we've all seen and some of the divisiveness comes from certain pages allow things and they don't allow everyone to be here. They shut people off or block them as they, they say on the internet, I've been blocked or my opinion has been taken down and, and you see a lot of that and it creates divisiveness. How do you stop it? How do you get around it? Because what it does, it's like putting gas on a fire that's smoldering. All of a sudden you've got flames all over the place and it's not good. Indeed. I think the, the only really concrete way that you can stop that is by encouraging people to be truthful and, and then putting moderators in place for your social media pages. I myself am currently running Mark Benjamino for Selectman page on Facebook. If I am to get elected, that's going to change just to a general page for myself and I'm only going to put out either what I know or the facts about whatever policies that we're dealing with on the board or anything that comes out of it. Um, and as for people who speak inflammatory or are divisive, you simply need to encourage people to act in good faith. And that's what I'm going to do uh, if, I, if I am s selected to be selectman. So you're going to try to stay positive? Indeed, of course. I think that uh, as much as I can be a bit cynical sometimes about the world, uh, whenever it comes to the lives of other people or a duty or a leadership position, I am always optimistic. You have to be. You have to give people hope. You have to be in the right mindset to be able to, uh, you know, be a voice for the people, be a, be a positive one. Okay. Well, you said there are a lot of things you'd like to see in here, and we've only touched on a couple others. Keep going. We're, we're getting some, some good rhetoric here. So... Some of the other stuff that I would like to see in Hanson, um, I would like to see some more controls for finances. I think a big pain point for people in this town is the budget. It's how the money is spent, how the money is allocated. I want to see the taxpayer's money spent well and the taxpayer's money used efficiently. And I also want to be able to fund everything. And that's, that's a broad statement. And a very, very broad. <laughs> very difficult one at that. But how I want to do that is I want to attract more commerce to the town. I want to streamline application processes so we can bring in more business. I want to find the roadblocks so that we can bring in more money for the town and also attract businesses that are going to in turn attract people to the town. Give people something to do while also maintaining the rural element and charm of Hanson. Okay, well all, all of that is budgetary. Indeed. Whether it be Whitman Hanson Regional School District or whether it be the budgets in the town of Hanson, it, it, it all comes down to dollars and cents and a lot of the candidates have said the same thing as far as we need to attract more business, we need to be uh, more friendly, we need to cut down the process of, of paperwork and red tape and that's been said several times. But as you know, towns have talked about uh, five-year plans, 10-year plans, but what derails five and 10-year plans are town meeting. Town meeting's the funding source. So the towns come together and, and come up with a five-year plan. We're gonna fix this this year, we're gonna fix that. And then it doesn't get voted. How do you deal with it? Well, as far as long-term plans, of course, this is going to be a two-year seat. Uh, I want to, now in business school, you are given the tools to be able to build a business plan and a long-term plan, whether or not you are there in the business or not, whether you pass away or whether you sell your shares in the company, whatever it may be. I would like to build a plan for, and a very detailed plan at that, that's on paper, that makes it easy for anyone else that is to take my seat or if, you know, for whatever reason, something happens to me, whatever. Uh, I want to build a framework for people to use, and not only a framework, but a very detailed plan for any uh, long-term activity that the board votes on so that it's all laid out for anybody who 
chooses to follow it. Okay. So in layman's terms, so to speak, so everybody can read the plan, is that that's what you're talking Correct. about? Yes. It's so, because it gets difficult. I mean, I, from a guy who's been in many, many budget cycles and in, in big money budgets, it's difficult for people to understand the budgeting process. Um, as you know, over the last three to four to five years, the transfer station always seems to end up partially in some of the budgets. What's your, what's your thoughts? Well, I think that, as you were saying, sometimes when you have long-term plans, they get you know, disjointed or they fall apart or whatever it may be. I think that if this is a problem that continues to show up and it continues to be part of the budgetary process, there should be a focus on it. Deal with it in its entirety. Do our best to solve the problem immediately rather than drag it out. Because, as I said, there are going to be people that come after me. It's a two-year term. I want to, any issue that I deal with when I'm on the board, I want to deal with it as much as humanly possible and get as much done with focus as I can. So it's, <clears throat> it seems like, it, as you and I are discussing it, focus, layman's terms, keep people involved, give it to, give them the information that they can make some of the judgments with, but you're still, after you lay all these frameworks out, you're still gonna have the negative side of the coin. It goes along with being humanized, so to speak, Indeed. or being human. You're going to have that because there are people that don't like change. I know it's a difficult question, but how do you deal with it? Well, I'm a firm believer that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. All I think we can do is encourage people that progress is coming, whether you like it or not. Hansen needs to evolve with the times. It needs to evolve to the challenges that it faces. And you need to explain that in plain terms to them and show them all the positives and negatives to every issue. Give them your opinion, be optimistic about what you're working on, and then let them decide for themselves. Unfortunately, I can't always change everyone's minds, but I will try my best to ensure that people are behind changes that I or anyone else on the board ultimately make for the town and its betterment. I think out of all the candidates looking, looking at the list, you are probably the youngest. So you may be able to remember the recreation that you have done at Camp Kiwani and, and stuff that you had mentioned. Would you like to see more of it? Well, give, me, give me your thoughts on that. Yes, I would I love mean, to see more of it. Uh, I, I mean, there was, Hanson Day, not too long ago. I want I want to have more events that people can go out to uh, and enjoy the outdoors and the rural element of Hanson because that's one of the key attractive points of our town. I want to see people go out to Camp Kiwani, uh, you know, together, whether it's with their family, their friends, neighbors. I want to see the old Hanson that I remember. I remember before, uh, you know, technology was really, really advanced. Right when I was real young. Um, I just remember going out and enjoying the wilderness, enjoying the camps, enjoying you know fishing, whatever it may be, and then enjoying the parades, the events in Hanson. I want to see more of that, and, and if I'm on the board, I, I would like to, to move to make some more days for people to get out and get connected and enjoy our town. Well, the old theory always has been on camaraderie and, and people meeting people. I know that Social media puts a lot of people together that probably wouldn't even have ever seen each other again because of the vast technology that we have today to meet people. I mean, you can almost plug anyone's name in, and now you can see where they live. Oh, I went to school with that person, and blah, 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 and on and on and on. Are you talking about things like maybe if you were, if you were um, elected, maybe going to the senior center, uh, you know, how would you interact? Because keep in mind now, you're 22, and that's a far cry from a 65-year-old, and, and they love to see the vibrance of youth, but it's also got its, you know, you, you've got different generations there. Right, it can would be you go out, would, How are you gonna do that? What's well, your plan? As you said, being able to just go to places like the Senior Center, just going and engaging people and shaking hands and sitting down and having a conversation with them like you and I are doing right now. I don't think I've ever personally had a problem with generational divide. I'm somebody who is very agreeable. I listen to all points of view. 
you know, whether it's a far cry from mine or not. Um, and many people call me an old soul in a young man's body. I think I can relate to the wide spectrum of people that are uh, in the constituency in Hanson. So I want to go out to places where people already gather, generate new places where people gather, and be there myself, shake hands, talk to them, not just about their viewpoints and about politics, but about their general lives and take a genuine interest in the people of Hanson. Good. Well, we've touched on a lot of the budgets, and the biggest budget is the school district. What are you thinking? Well, the school district uh, budget has always been a, a difficult issue, in my view. I think that the school budget has to uh, find a way to make sure that it is efficient and make sure that it's done correctly, while also being able to evolve itself to the times. One of the biggest things that I've been hearing from people is that the uh, technology and some of the resources in the classrooms need to be updated. But that's very hard when the budget is already really big and it seems that a lot of the money is, uh, you know, maybe perhaps not enough for the town. You know, there's a deficit of $900,000 right now. And that's very difficult. Um, I think they need to focus more on the maintenance of the schools rather than purchasing new things. I think evolving with the times is going to be an effort for later once we get more money into the town itself. It's, uh, it's very difficult to manage that budget right now and I think that giving the town more money and more tools to handle that budget is going to be the way to solve the issues with it. Okay, all right. We have other budgetary items in town. I mean, the police budget is, is big. The fire department budget is big. The DPW budget is big. And I'm not saying it big like like it's crazy, you not, don't get me wrong, I think they do a fabulous job. You have to string it all together. People want services, but they want it for the best that they possibly can because, as you know, budgets, w when you start taxing people, you know, we hear it all the time, the hardest people tax are the people that are seniors. Right. And I think that's really hard for people because a lot of seniors, especially people who are retired or are on pension, um, when these budget plans are made and when they see these budgets and then they see a tax increase or, or what have you, they're thinking about, well, what, can I really pay for this? You know, what is it that I'm going to have to cut out of my personal life or, or not to be able to fund this town? And that's a very, very delicate balance to strike and very um, valid concerns. I think that Public services need to be funded. I'm, if I'm elected to selectmen, and not that I'm not already, but I'm going to be a big proponent of emergency services just because it runs in my family, and I think they're absolutely essential and should have the utmost support. But at the same time, we have to be mindful of the people that are being taxed and the people that are funding this stuff. Um, so I want to look in depth at the budgets and find the best way to balance that. Um, Again, it all comes down to commerce for me, bringing in more money. I think <laughs> it's tough because you want to do it all, but you have to have the money to do it realistically. And I want to generate the opportunities for this town to have those budgets that we so desperately want so that people can look at the budgets and look at their taxes and say, well, you know, I have it all and I don't need to sacrifice very much. Okay. We talk about town meeting as the purest form of government. I've heard that for the 35 or 40 years I've been going to town meeting. And it is the purest form of government. It brings the people out. They vote on how the town's going to spend the money ultimately. It's called town meeting, right? Well, we struggle. We have seven, 8,000 voters, or maybe even more. I'll, I'll get called out on that. But we have trouble getting 150 voters for a quorum to vote on huge issues that affect their taxes. Any ideas on maybe how to change that? I, and, and I'll give you a, a couple of examples of, of big, one time we were going to build a school and I think we had seven or 800 people, but it was because it was a big ticket item. Um, last year, last couple of years, COVID was a problem, you know, getting people together and uh, both Whitman and Hanson had it outside at the field at the Whitman Hanson Regional High School. And I believe we had three to 400 people. Any ideas on 
Obviously, it's probably going to go back inside again just because it's sometimes unmanageable to have it outside because if weather affects you. Is there any way that we can, as a town, do better getting people? They complain about the taxes, but they don't come to town meeting. <laughs> What do we do? Any ideas? I mean, I know there's no cure, so I'm not looking for you to wave, wave a magic wand, but it's a question I've asked other candidates. I, I have a few ideas for it, yes. I, I know that this is historically a problem for Hanson. Uh, I believe that one of the ways that we can get more people to attend is by moving town meeting. There's been a push um, for, for a while that town meeting should be held on the weekends or on a Saturday uh, in specific, and I think that that's a really good idea. I think that people are very, very, very busy in their daily lives. Uh, how can you possibly expect you know, a mother with children to go to a full-time job, do things around the house, take their kids to things, stay up to date on not only you know, federal politics that affect them, but then local politics, never mind go to a meeting that's potentially hours long. You know, it's, it's very difficult to uh, do during the week. So I think that moving the time and the days that we hold town meeting uh, should be a priority. I don't think, uh, some people have said that we should just abolish it outright, but I'm of the opinion, like you, that it is a traditional and uh, very necessary form of government. It's pure. So we need to keep it around. Uh, as for bringing out more turnout, I think that just disseminating material, whether that be through social media or otherwise, and encouraging people, like, these are, these are the choices that you can make at town meeting. These are the, the things that are coming down the pipe. Um, we want to hear your opinion. You know, really encouraging people that this is going to affect you. Um, I think that's a way to get uh, more turnout. Mark, you're not going to believe it, but our half hour is all, almost up. So take a, a, a minute, look into the camera, and tell the voters of Hanson why they should elect Mark Mitchell Benjamino out of four candidates for the Board of Selectmen. Well, for everyone out there that's a voter, uh, you should select me and vote for me as a candidate for selectmen. I'm young, I'm voracious, I'm very ambitious. My interests are your interests. I have no personal stake in anything. I am free of ethical concern, and I will be working for the people. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I stated at the beginning of bringing on, we have four candidates for a three-year term, four candidates for a two-year term. If you would like to be interviewed, any of the other candidates on the list, please contact me at bobhayes4433 at gmail.com, or you can call me on my cell phone at 617-538-0189. And just as a wrap, we have three people running for Board of Health. Vote for one. We have two people running for school committee. Vote for two. We have two trustees for the library, vote for two. We have two for water commissioner, vote for two. The only contested races here are Board of Health and both seats on the Board of Selectmen. So ladies and gentlemen, please contact me if there's any programming you would like to see on Bring It On. And thank you for watching, we'll be back. Thank you. <laughs>